you know, we're on the streets um, trying to check out, you know, not necessarily answering calls for service, but, you know, trying to be proactive and prevent crime, not just respond after it happens. So you're driving down, and, and, and what caught your eye? Uh, Officer Rios was driving. I was in the passenger seat. It's a very dark street there on Elliott, uh, very little street lights. We happened to be driving, and I glanced to my right, and just a, a little bit of light reflected off of the car that was parked back there. It was actually behind a tree, parked very, very, very uh, inconspicuously. And I told Rios, hey, there's a car back there. So he spun the car around, and as we approached, the lights were still off. And as soon as we stopped in front of it, then the headlights came on. So I thought, you know, the people are going to try to take off. Maybe it's a stolen car. But then the driver's door opens up. So I get out, Rios gets out. And uh, then we see this grown gentleman come out. And then I see the, the head of a, a female, can't really tell, um, coming out. And I initially asked him, what are you guys doing? You, you know, just making out back here or something? And then I see that's a little girl walking around this car. And he goes, no, no, nothing like that. And uh, that's when it's just, you know, goes from something suspicious to something horrific, at least in my mind. Okay, so what, 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 what happens next? I mean, do you obviously call for investigators, right? Or well, do you, start, or do you start talking to them? Or? Well, I, I, I call out, you know, to dispatch what I got, and I ask for a supervisor immediately to come there because it got the feeling that, you know, this is going to be bad. So uh, I actually have uh, Rios take the girl off to the side so she's away while uh, I'm busy talking to the gentleman. And he ended up uh, telling me the story that he knew her, that he saw her walking, and that he was just trying to offer her a ride. And uh, his story just didn't make sense. You know, you can tell when somebody's lying to you, there's a lot of different clues, body clues, facial clues, um, just the way that they hold themselves, the way that they speak that just throw you off and this guy was giving them all off. So at what point do you do you realize that it's the same girl or, or that she's been abducted? Well while we're actually busy um, dealing with him uh, I, he's been detained at this point um, just because her story and his story didn't match up then uh, while, while we're actually talking to her about maybe an hour later I hear uh, over dispatch a report for a missing person come out, a missing juvenile and you hear the description and then I look at my sergeant, who had already arrived on scene, I said, Sarge, this is her. And uh, that's when he starts making more notifications um, regarding that. I know your dad. I saw you last night with your little one. Yes. To, to know that you could have, I mean, did, did thoughts go in your mind? I know it's like out there they probably don't, but you had some time to sort of digest a little bit. What could have happened? Any number of things could have happened. Um, unfortunately, in our line of work, the unimaginable happens every day and it's not the good kind and we get to see that and that's one thing that I didn't want to see that day. When, when mom says or grandma says you know I, I can't thank these officers enough there's no way that I can repay them how does that make you feel? feels great there's such a a lack of support for police nowadays and it's actually nice to see the public backing us because what they don't understand is this is what we do every day. We see suspicious cars and we hop out on people. We make contact with people. It may be two people just talking about their day's work. It may be some people dealing drugs. It may be something like this. And when something like this happens, it makes the news and it's nice that everybody's safe. And, you know, I just want the public to know we are out there, whether you see us or not, and this is what we do. We are the police and we protect your city. I, I go back to the, it's a dark place. You're looking around, you guys are both out looking. You could have very easily, you're the bastard, you could have been on your cell phone checking Facebook. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're sitting there and you, I mean. Well, that's not what I'm paid to do. I'm paid to police. Um, you got any, well, how long have you been an officer? I've been with Portsmouth since 2008. What is it about that you love? Good job. <laughs> uh, can't imagine doing anything else actually. I mean you get to chase people, um, you know, drive fast, play hide and seek basically, and you get paid for it. Come on. It's awesome. And you're uh, obviously trying to uh, make this a habit of uh, doing noble things. I mean I mean I know you, I know you do no, things every no. day, but uh, I mean no, no like noble things. Up a pretty good resume. All these officers out here do noble things. They just don't get reported. While we were busy with this, there were two reports for groups of juveniles breaking into cars. 
Out of the seven juveniles that were reported, described, our officers caught five of them. In two separate calls, people were chasing these people down and catching them. These are the people that are breaking into all the cars down in Old Town. You know, the, the officers are out there doing their jobs. It's just, you know, we don't get recognized, and I'm lucky enough to have some higher, I guess, quality. Uh, we were driving down Elliott, and like you said, it's a, it's a very dark road. There's not very many street lights, and there's woods on both sides. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't see it. And he points out, he says to me that there's a, a vehicle parked behind a tree. And it's really dark, so he says, let's turn around, let's check it out. So I turned the car around and pull into pull into this uh, field, if you will, and stop. I stop our patrol car right in front of the um, right in front of their car and activate my lights. That time his headlights turn on and um, the male jumped out of the driver's side door and the juvenile jumped outside of the passenger door. Um, that time I decided to separate the juvenile from the male um, and at that time that's when we figured out, that's when we realized through our investigation that um, they didn't belong together. What did she say to you? Um, she, was, she was very intelligent for her age. She, um, I asked her how old she was um, and she, she told me and she knew her her address. She knew her guardians' names and information. She was she was very she was very open about that. Um, I kept explaining to her that she wasn't in any trouble, um, and she was she was very. Yeah, I let her sit in the police car with me, and she was very excited about that. Um, but she was in very high spirits. Did she give me any any indication that that something was wrong here? Um, she seemed a little confused about the whole ordeal. Um, I'm not sure. How, how much she actually understood about what was happening. You mentioned that, 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 um, that you guys might have got there just in time, right? I mean, we don't know what his intentions were. Correct. Um, you, can't, you, you can't play the what if game, but like I said, we were just in the right place at the right time, and we just happened to see the, happened to see the vehicle, and being, proact being proactive officers, that's why we initiated our investigation. When you, when you hear a mom or a grandma say, you know, I can't, I can't repay them enough, what's, what's that feeling like at the end of a, a shift? I'm sure that, that made its way around that it's, she said that. It's a good feeling. It's, it's nice to hear. Um, but every once in a while, just like with when you have to take your licks in life, so, you know, so too do you just take the praise and roll with it and move forward. It was just nice to be appreciated and thanked. You got any questions? What went through your mind when you see this little girl come out with this guy? I guess the question is, did you think right away as you see it, man, that's something, something's weird here? Initially, yes, yeah, some, something told me that something wasn't right. Um, and that's why, and thankfully there was two of us and not just one of us. So that's why my partner went off and spoke with the, uh, with the gentleman that got out of the driver's side and I took it upon myself to take the juvenile off to another side and talk to her privately.